Puzzlers, it's me, Dr. T, here at Puzzle Life. I have a couple of things in store for us today. First, I hope you've noticed that the video production quality is slowly improving. I still have a lot to learn about what to do in front of the camera and things that I have to do behind the camera. And hopefully over time, the production quality will continue to improve. Second, as we construct the puzzle today, I will first share a couple of tips and techniques about what I've learned over the years when it comes to doing puzzles. I love doing puzzles. It's a hobby and I think it's fun, but it is also a great tool for exercise on your brain. Like any other muscle, your brain needs exercise. Finally, we're gonna chat a little bit about the topic of mindfulness. And I found the perfect puzzle to go along with this discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video. And if you think the topic is worthy, please feel free to share it with your family and friends. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Are you ready to have fun? I sure am. Meet me over at the puzzle table. Okay, so we're back at the puzzle table. I'd like to start us off by talking first about three tips to help you as you begin to do your jigsaw puzzles. One of the first things I recommend is making sure you prepare. Prepare space that you're gonna be working. Sometimes it only takes a couple of hours, but a lot of the puzzles that I do typically takes a couple of hours over a couple of days because I just have a short time to focus on the puzzling and I have a full-time job and I have a family. So making sure you prepare a space where you can leave your puzzle and your pieces out and no one disturbs them. The second, as you can see here, I go through a really rigorous sorting process when I begin to do my puzzles. I love to flip every piece over, look at the colors, look at the patterns, and begin sorting. Sometimes I go to two or three sorting levels. First I do by color, then by pattern. It makes it a lot easier when you actually start to put the pieces together. So I definitely recommend that you flip every piece over, take a look at them, and begin to do some sort of sorting. Now, as I construct puzzles, my go-to mechanism is to do the parameters first, do the framing first. And that's the way, if you've looked at a couple of the videos, I've started most of the time working on the parameters. Now, there is some recommendations that if that is the way you prefer to do it, to give your brain some additional exercise, maybe every now and then you should start from working in the middle of the puzzle. But for me, it's doing the big picture first and then I go in and fill in the rest of the puzzle. So those are my top three tips on um, preparing, sorting, and constructing your puzzle, thinking about either going for big picture framing or starting in the middle and building outwards. The second thing I'd like to share before we get into the topic of mindfulness is earlier, I mentioned that jigsaw puzzles could be great tools for exercising the brain. And I want to talk just a little bit about that. Jigsaw puzzles actually allow you to exercise both the left side and the right side of your brain. So you get to use your left side, which is more of your logic center, and you it allows you to use your right side, which really allows you to focus on creativity, intuition, and things like that. So that's one item I would point out. The second is that it actually has shown through some neuroscience research that jigsaw puzzles improve short-term memory. So if you're a person who cannot remember for the life of you where you set down your keys, or you find yourself keep looking for your cell phone, your wallet, or your purse, that's short-term memory. Doing jigsaw puzzles have been shown to improve short-term memory. And as we begin to move into our topic and our chat about mindfulness, I like to think about jigsaw puzzles as a great meditation tool and a great stress reliever. For instance, because you're focusing on one image at a time for a long period of time, 
it really allows you to have that one singular focus without the extraneous or interrupted thoughts that come in or invade your brain for some of us all the time. And so it allows you to really relax, focus, and it relieves a lot of stress when you are doing jigsaw puzzles. And you have the actual benefit and celebration of seeing something come together and complete in a short period of time, especially if you have a lot going on, it feels like you're not being successful, gives you a short-term win. So those are some of the items I would raise for those of you who are thinking about doing some puzzles or those of you who've been doing puzzles and wanted to know what's the benefit. These are a couple of benefits that I found. I'll raise some more in the future. So now to our topic, mindfulness. What is it and how do we start practicing mindfulness? Well, if I was talking to my sister-in-law, Colin, or her husband, Ronald, and they wanted to know more about mindfulness, the way I would explain it is that mindfulness is really about paying attention. Paying attention to where you are, paying attention to what you are doing, what's happening with your senses, what's going on inside you, and what's going on outside of you. The idea of mindfulness is to wake up your inner workings of your mental, emotional, and physical processes, right? Why am I thinking about this? What's happening? Why am I feeling this way? What's going on with my emotions? So really paying attention to those sort of things in the moment. And it also means paying attention to others. So if you're having a conversation and something someone has said maybe upsets you, a question would be, I wonder why that upset me or I wonder why that person said that. A part of mindfulness is really suspending judgment like, oh, this person is being mean. It's not about being mean, just really wondering or being um, appreciatively curious about what's happening. I wonder why that person is saying that. I wonder what's going on with them. I wonder why what they said hit me that way. Why am I feeling that way? What's going on with me that caused me to have such a visceral reaction to what a colleague just said? So mindfulness is really simply about paying attention, paying attention to what's going on inside you, paying attention to what's going on around you and outside of you. Now, how do you begin to practice mindfulness? Let's talk about three simple things. The first thing I would recommend is that you take time, pause, and breathe as you transition from one activity to another. I know we have a lot going on, and so you know it's hard to say, oh, I have to go from one meeting to another. I have to go from a meeting to cooking dinner now that we're working from home or I have to work and I have to do the laundry. But stopping after each activity, pausing, breathing, and giving yourself time to transition. First, acknowledge that you just completed something. Is there something you need to do to follow up? But then being able to transition fully into your next activity and to be mindful, you need to just stop and breathe and just focus so that you can be present in the moment if it's about having dinner with your family or if it's about doing the laundry. You're less likely to make simple mistakes or, or have challenges with the idea of multitasking, which if you know me, I'm totally against and I don't believe in doing. I believe in doing one thing at a time and focusing on that one activity completing it and then moving on to something else. So that would be my first tip. Always take time, pause, and breathe as you transition from one activity to the other. The second tip I would recommend 
if you're like me and you have a lot going on, and even with the best of intentions, our minds tend to wander, try to relax your mind and quiet the activity of your brain. So if you're in a meeting and you find yourself thinking about food, you find yourself thinking about what you're going to have for dinner, you find yourself thinking about, oh my God, the kids are running around. See if you could begin the practice of settling down what's happening in your brain. So slow your brain activity. One thing I did when I first started to practice mindfulness is I try to quiet my brain for one minute. And I had to start that process over at least a hundred times because trying to think about just one thing for one minute and not having an interrupted thought, it was actually a fun process because I didn't realize how much I had going on. And then the third activity I would recommend is that you suspend judgment. That is our default is to judge everything that happens. Oh, that's a good thing. Oh, that a, that's a bad thing. It is what it is. That's the way I approach things. I actually think about what's happening. I want to be more appreciatively curious or intellectually curious about something and not so much place judgment on it. So, hmm, why am I feeling this way? I wonder what caused that person to say that. I wonder why they are approaching the work that way. Because in this way, you leave yourself open to learning something new, to understanding a different approach to a problem that you solve a different way. But being intellectually curious and not placing blame that this is a good idea, this is a bad idea, it's a good thing, this is a bad thing, it really allows you to really engage in an open conversation and an open opportunity to learn something new and to share something um, in some cases with others. So those are the three that I will focus on.